Today we're going to be completing the industry standard 6G TIG and stick welding test. This is the test that all pipe welders have to undertake if you get to a really high standard of welding. The reason this test is used so extensively is because it's fixed at 45 degrees and you've got to weld in every single position which 6G covers. So to start this weld on the 6 inch pipe we're going to be putting a TIG root in using 86 amps. What we're looking to do is control and get a root run that penetrates through the other side of the joint as you can see in this part of the video now. We've got to add plenty of wiring ensuring that we get that root run all the way through that joint while ensuring that we're fusing into both sides of the pipe. Now as the welder you can't see the underneath of this so you can't see if it's penetrating through so what we're looking to do is form a keyhole and keep that keyhole formation adding plenty of wire into the centre of that. So we're going all the way around the pipe just putting that root run in ensuring we've got strength and a good solid root run before we move on to the second pass which is known as the hot pass. The purpose of the hot pass is to ensure that we get proper fusion between the root pass and the second pass. The only reason it's called a hot pass is because it's performed with a higher current than the first run. So for this example we're using 105 amps. Because we've increased the heat input we achieve better fusion between the root run and our following run. This allows us to pick up any lack of fusion or bits that we could have accidentally missed so there are no nasty surprises when the pipe is x-rayed. Once the job's been x-rayed and it's passed you then get your codings and are qualified to complete the job. So here's the completed root run and hot pass. Now we should be able to go onto our stick welding run and not blow through or disturb the root. So now we're going to move on to the stick welding process. What we're going to do is weave from side to side into both pipe walls using 115 amps ensuring that we fuse into both sides of it. This is an extremely important run. As we're weaving, we need to ensure that we're putting enough filler material into the joint and also fusing into both side walls, ensuring that we keep a nice close arc and also ensuring that we keep our 35 degree electrode angle. We're going to do this all the way around the pipe until we've got a nice filler run until we move on to our stringer beads and start splitting the runs. When you start splitting the runs we're going to use the same torch angle 35 degrees all the way around and what we're going to do is start stacking these runs and ensuring that we overlap our previous run. So the first run will look a little bit like this into the side wall all the way around. After you've completed that it will then move on to the second run which you would have overlapped the first run and ended up with a nice flat base. Setting up for our capping run which is going to give us a nice flat base. Can you guess how many capping runs this is going to take? Let us know in the comments down below. So cap run number one using 7018 rods. What we're going to be doing is make sure we overlap that edge so that we've got no missed edges, keeping our electrode angle consistent throughout and a nice tight arc. After each run we are going to grind and make our welding joint right at the end a tiny bit concave. This is going to ensure when we join up to our previous run it does a smooth transition and the weld is going to look neat and consistent throughout. And what you can see now is why stick welding got its nickname. So with one run of the first cap done we're now going to move on to the opposite side and work our way round. So if we've done this right, we should have a nice straight run that's overlapped the edge, giving us no missed edges, leading us on to our second run, which now we're going to have to be extremely careful with, because we've got to now overlap this run to hit the peak of the previous stick welding run. So when we're talking about the peak, we mean the middle of the previous run, which is going to be about 50% overlap. The reason why it's so important that we hit 50% of the previous run is to make sure we've got a flat surface and we don't leave any material that can catch slag traps. And obviously, if you can imagine, if we've got gaps in between our weld, it's not going to look very professional. Not only that, we've got weak points in all parts of the weld, everywhere there's a gap. So we need a nice consistent base, a nice flat base all the way over the cap him run. So same process, make sure we de-slag, grind that little gully into it so you can join up your next run, make sure you maintain that arc angle, keeping it nice, consistent and straight throughout and if you've done it correctly, 
it should be overlapping and look like this. If you guess free runs in the comments down below, congratulations, this is a free run cap. So what we're gonna do is move on. You can see that we've got a nice little gap to follow now. Very important that we go 50% over the previous run and also overlap that edge keeping the nice consistent tight arc and the travel speed consistent. When your travel speed's consistent and your electrode angle is correct, that's when you're gonna get the nice neat stick welding finishes. When we move on to the capping run, what we did was allow the material to cool down. This will give you a better capping finish. And we also lowered the amp slightly from 115 throughout to 105, just to give us that extra nice finish. And to just make it an even more professional job, what we're gonna do at the end is wire brush and clean it up. So in this video, you've learned to do the industry standard 6G welding test and in the playlist you can see on the screen now is going to show you how to pipe weld in all different types of positions. We will see you over there. Thanks for watching as always. Don't forget to give us a like if you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.